My name is Charles Gray. I'm an artist that works in multimedia. I grew up with my mother and brother in Fort Worth. We were in a lower class an economical situation and I just was creative in a sense I would draw on the walls things that I would see so cartoons and my family and flowers and stars and moons and things. When I graduated I ended up meeting somebody at a community college who was a working artist named Joshua Good and he explained to me the ideas of working narratively. So from that point, I decided that I would attempt to work narratively with making things, and I felt comfortable doing that. Nobody I knew was artistic in a way that I was being artistic. My grandmother was very creative, but it was out of survival. And that influenced me later, but like as a kid, nobody was rendering figures that I ever saw. I wanted people to really be my friend a lot. And I found investigating them was like the best way to figure out how to be friendly to them, but then hopefully they would reciprocate that thing. So. I would draw them. I started drawing my family members first, and then in high school, as my abilities increased, I would just get permission to go around school and draw kids in other classes. I don't want to make work about traumatic things. I know, like, the landscape of black artists typically revolves around traumatic experiences to be the forefront of like what our narratives, like what's deemed important. But I do not agree with that. So I like Pokemon and anime in my family. So those tend to be like the main vehicles I use to have my narrative conversations. Using things like crayons and coloring books in an academic space elevates them to make them now viable for somebody to believe okay, this is a part of this person's narrative. And traditionally, that's not what people see. When people ex like experience me specifically, it's through the lens of size and physicality. So there's an assumption that I'm durable or that I'm athletic or that I enjoy the things of somebody like sports or uh, I don't know, boy things. Binaries, that's that's the term, binaries. And I think that when you use things that are iconography of like childhood and you associate that with my direct physical form of being a big black person, there is typically met with, oh, and then now maybe the opportunity to re-inform people. I took a sculpture class in the spring of 2022 with Yana. And during the sculpture process, I was being met with my physicality as far as like being in a class with other students. Like, oh, you know, perceptively you look, you're sculpting yourself and, you, and me with flesh and blood, oh, that's like an approachable person, but the sculpture looks imposing and the sculpture looks Aggressive. So hearing these words, um, I definitely want to show the sculpture and uh, and make more and multiples of the sculpture to emphasize that I don't see myself as imposing or dangerous or any of those things. And the process of making myself and validating like that I don't see myself as these critiques. I started thinking about God for whatever reason. Like, I guess because he made me, but yeah, as I start thinking about how the person that made me views me and there are no, like, strings or connections to how I feel like he perceives me. So that's really the conclusion I came to after making all these things. Which led me to doing the portraits as well, because it's like, uh, I enjoy making portraits. 
portraits are supposed to be connected to the podium and adhered onto the podium so that even if you're not directly facing me, you're directly facing me because no matter what side of the podium you go to, I'm looking at you. And I want to engage with people intentionally um, in a non-performative uh, face, just my regular face. So um, that's how where they started. But then Letitia Huckabee brought her kids to the studio and they said, this looks very crowded. I think you should give everything its own space. So I did that and it looked significantly better. And that's how, why the portraits are separate from the podium. I know that I have a internal desire to make things to the point where if I don't make things, I will get sick and physically uncomfortable. So it's like a health and wellness aspect to it that supersedes the need to like make monetary gain. Like if I don't want to like say the words, but if I don't make monetary gain from this, that's okay because I'm happy.